Hello, Audioholics. This is Logan, and welcome back to Album Reviews on Audioholics Anonymous. Today, we will be reviewing the new A Day to Remember album. You're welcome. And here to help is somebody I would not like to remember. Uh, Tyler. You can't see, but I'm thumbsing down right now. And that's about all I have to say about this album. Okay, bye, guys. I didn't know. Yeah. Seriously, though, this album sucked. Like, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. All right. So a little background on this album. We had never really listened to A Day to Remember before, so we did some research into what's considered their best album. I forget the name of the one we listened to. Do you remember? Uh, no. I can look it up while you're uh, speaking, though. What Separates Me From You. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, so we listened to that, and I was like, well, it's 6 out of 10. It's not terrible. He liked it a little more than me, I think. Um, but then we listened to this new album. The reason why we listened to the older album is because a lot of media critics and things have told us that this is kind of a sellout album and the band themselves have basically said as much in interviews. So we wanted to hear what they sounded like before. And then we put on the new album and I don't even have to take points off for the selloutiest sellout garbage that this album is. Because if I did that, it'd be a zero out of 10. This is a horrible fucking album. And it's bad on its own merit, regardless of whether or not it's a sellout. If, if they had made this album as like a true creative statement, I might have taken off more points just out of principle. Because it's so bad. <laughs> the vocals on this album are generic and actually annoying as fuck at times. They remind me of a worse Jacoby Shaddix from Papa Roach. At least he adds some grit to his vocals. Fucking the guy from Imagine Dragons mix that guy with Jacoby Shaddix, a worse Jacoby Shaddix with a less good voice and less good delivery, and you get whatever the fuck they put on this record. What were they thinking with those vocals? Like, oh my God. By the time we got halfway through the album, I was like, so fucking done with this singer yeah and and keep in mind we listened to the last album and i already said it wasn't strong vocally yeah so then we get to the instrumentals speaking of fucking generic and boring the instrumentals on this album leave no mark at all there isn't one moment on the entire album that is even remotely memorable there's like maybe one good riff on the whole album just one just one little riff <laughs> the songwriting is the worst part this actually offended me by how bad it was. These songs are actually really terrible. What was that I, it's I hard don't see. Uh, go, sorry, go on. It's easy to practice when you're peach, when your life. Um, when you're, it's easy to practice what you preach when your life is a peach. Yeah, that's like the one of the, that could go up there as like one of the worst lyrics I've yeah. ever heard. I, I don't understand how you could listen to these lyrics and yeah. melodies of songs like Viva La Mexico and Only Money and think, yeah, that's good. Let's put that on an album. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's it's uninteresting. You know, like that song Viva La Mexico, it reminds me of Ailstorm, and that's not a good sign. At its best, I mean. And yeah. it's at its worst, it's so painful I wanted to turn it off. Yeah. I wanted to I wanted to listen to Maroon 5. <laughs> it was I love how we're just like Maroon 5 is the ultimate shame comparison <laughs> at this point. So personal enjoyment, I there was a song or two that I didn't absolutely hate with every fiber of my being, maybe only half of the fibers of my being. But that's about all I can say as a positive. Despite that, I'm not giving this a zero out of ten. It at least sounded okay production wise and it was coherent and it wasn't jo just like feedback noise like lou reed's machine music so for that reason i give it a 3.3 .3 out of 10 so i would say there so i have a lot of opinions on this album <laughs> oh no <laughs> so i think i've become at least to the two fans that we have kind of infamous for being the guy that plays devil's advocate and don't worry i will in this album but i kind of do that for this thing that i kind that i'm going to call the phantom menace effect 
I think that we as a society, not just in terms of critical critical review, um, you know, uh, things like that, we as a society are very reactionary and very extremist. And something has to go down as the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. There is, like, very little... Like, you know, uh, Christopher Columbus is a good example in history. Was he the best person ever? No. Was he the worst person ever? Not really. But he's still pretty bad as a person. He didn't. He didn't do all of the things that we claim he did. Um, he probably was not responsible for the Indian genocide, but he's still not a very good person, and he definitely did some things that would be, to say the very least, questionable by today's standards. I bring up the Phantom Menace because it's a more modern example of that. The Phantom Menace is a movie that a lot of people liked when it first came out. And then over time, it started to become like, oh, it's not really as good as people are saying to, oh, this is bad to, oh, this is the worst thing ever. And then I think as of recently, as of like a couple of years ago, it's kind of started to, I think people are starting to give like backlash to the earlier backlash and say, this isn't good, but it's not as bad as everybody else is saying. So that's the danger, I think, of saying something is really good or really bad. So is this the worst sellout album ever made, as some no. critics will say? No. It's still pretty fucking bad, though. Um so the vocals to me don't really do anything all that insulting neither do the instrumentals like he said it's just pretty boring there are a couple decent moments of some songs uh at least instrumental wise but like i said the songwriting is just atrocious and they need i i, I hate to say this and I wish I was not in the position to where I had to say this. But if you are going to sell out and that is your ultimate goal, you need a better transition than this. Don't just throw in a bunch of classic Day to Remember songs and then just like fill the rest with Imagine Dragons shit fan fiction. You need to kind of have a consistency that is somewhere in the middle of Imagine Dragons and um, and your classic stuff. Take Maroon 5, for example. They are, I think, the ultimate example of how to sell out. I don't like Maroon 5. I didn't like them when they were very good. Uh, I, I didn't like them when they were supposedly in their golden age. And they've basically lost the respect of all of the critics and all of their hardcore fans. But they are still very successful and very relevant because they've sold, they've managed to sell out in the right way to where they can still be relevant and they can still pick up new fans. Maroon 5 now has an entirely different audience. Um, you know, and, and, and like, you know, there are people who are like, oh, Adam Levine, he's so hot and he has such beautiful like pecs and muscles or whatever. That's the crowd that Maroon 5 has and power to them. They sold out and it worked. Only because this of Maroon not... 5's rippling abs. <laughs> huh? I said only because of Adam Levine's rippling abs. Yeah. See, that that's a day to remember's fault. The lead singer is just well, not hot no, enough. The, 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 fault, <laughs> the fault is that they didn't... This is too awkward of a transition. You can make more mainstream music. You can make music that sounds like Imagine Dragons. It hasn't worked so far, but 
I don't know. Maybe it could. But I don't think that the way they did it was good. And th as a result, this is just going to disappoint everyone. It's not going to appeal to the hardcore fans because obviously they sold the fuck out and that's going to piss them off. And it's not going to pick up any new followers because they started out as this extreme screamy scream band and that's going to scare a lot of people away. Like, even if you're like, even if you're Slipknot and you can kind of get away with making screamy scream music and still charting or um, a more recent example, the architects doing a very similar thing and getting very similar results. It's still not going to satisfy you're, you're basically trying to appeal. It's the classic example of you're trying to appeal to everyone. And as a result, repeal uh, appeal to nobody. This is just an absolute failure of an album. History will prove me right and prove Tyler right and prove all of the critics right. I did not give it quite as bad of a score as Tyler. I gave it a straight four out of 10 uh, on an overall final score, but that is still, it's below average. It's, there is no, I do not recommend this album to anybody. There is yeah. not a single person I would recommend this album to. If you're into pop music, I don't recommend it because it has too much of the stink of a day to remember on it. If you're into a day to remember, I obviously don't recommend it because this is clearly a sell the fuck out album and the band even admitted as such. No, you know what they one don't group care of about people you I could recommend it to? About, huh? You know what one group of people I could recommend it to? Who? Kiss fans. They'll be right on board with this shit. <laughs> no, no. A day to remember every, should no, start selling who listens to a day to remember like, style toilet paper, anybody, and then they'll be on Gene Simmons level. <laughs> send it to Christina. See if she likes it. <laughs> she probably would. No, but um, uh, she's mad at me now because I'm talking shit about Kiss. Love yeah. you, babe. <laughs> no, but um. No, this is a 4 out of 10 record. I do not uh, recommend this to anybody. Stay the fuck away. I hope that this, and I think that it will, I hope that this entire project fails on its ass, and I think it will. Yeah. So the overall, so 4 out of 10 for me, and with his 3.3 .3 out of 10, that gives our AU meter final score to 3.7 out of 10. What an absolute disgusting failure. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so I, I deserving think, of that score. So I will argue with one point that he made, though. Selling out is not inherently a bad thing. Yes, it is. I would argue that Genesis sold out and it worked. No, they didn't, though, because the definition of selling out is making music purely for profit. That was not why they, they went in a more mainstream direction. And you, They like, went in well, a more mainstream direction because Peter Gabriel, the guy who wanted them to be proggy, left. And Phil Collins, the guy who wanted them to be more poppy, took the reins. I, I wouldn't even say that either. It was a natural either, musical. Like, I, I wouldn't even say that either, because, like, the first few records with Phil Collins were still pretty proggy. It wasn't until I'd say probably so. about Dookie. That they, they were a really lot started. less proggy than like the lamb lies down on Broadway or something. Yeah, I guess. But like, like, I, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't even say, I wouldn't say like Phil Collins sold out with like no Jack required. That is one of my favorite albums of all time. Well, I, I don't even know if I would say that's a sellout album. Like, you can make mainstream pop music without selling out. Like, that is the difference. You can make, you can be Ariana Grande or Taylor Swift and still not be sellouts. It depends on why you make the music that you make. If the only reason you're making music is to make money, then what you're making is barely music to begin with because it has no purpose. There's no creative expression. It's just a product. It's a soulless, lifeless, horrible product. And that's the problem with selling out. And that's why every sellout album sucks because it's lifeless. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think... I would not want to... 
alienate an album solely because it is a quote unquote sellout album. Like there are so many people who call the black album by Metallica a sellout album. It's not. And even if it was, it's still pretty damn good. Well, and that's why I said, like, before we did this album, I said, like, I'm going, because it's a sellout album, I'm just going to give it a cap at 8 out of 10. I have to take up points, because I believe that if it's a sellout album, album... Metallica higher than an 8 out of 10. Well, let me finish. Um, So, like, I feel like if you're selling out, the art that you're making is inferior to art of people who aren't selling out. And so I feel like I have to take off points for it. And me personally, it offends me a bit on a personal level. So I think two points is a fair, a fair assessment. As for the Black Album, I probably wouldn't rate it more than an 8 out of 10 anyway. Okay, well, my argument to that, though, is selling out does not necessarily mean quitting all artistic integrity. That's literally what it means. I think advertising is a good example of that. There are... Um, there are advertisements, there are commercials, there are advertising is a form of art. Okay, so, but the, did the artist make the art in the advertisement for the sole purpose of a paycheck? I if your answer are, is no, then it's probably pretty good. I would art. say, in some cases, in terms of advertising, the answer is no, but sometimes the answer is yes, and that's when the art sucks. So um, I would implore th- this is this is an ad that I, I recommend. I assume many people have already seen it because it's pretty popular. The Apple 1984 ad. They released this in the year 1984 to um, to promote the uh, uh, original Apple Macintosh computer and which uh, was their first like all in one computer. And it's. And, and it's a kind of a play on like, you know, uh, in in Orwell's book about Big Brother, they sort of made like the, I, I guess you could say in, uh, um, innuation. That's not a word. I don't know. They basically the, um, they basically implied like you know the IBM's and the Commodores and the um and like the you know um fuck ataris and things of the day were starting to become big brother now of course that's fucking hilarious and ironic in hindsight because apple is by definition big brother but even though i will argue not as bad as other companies but that, 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 my point is is that that is a commercial that clearly had artistic intent and clearly it was meant to sell a product, but it did so in a very clever and I would argue creative way. Then by definition, it is not selling out. It's literally selling out. It's literally no, it's selling not. a fucking product. Selling out is when you make art for the sole purpose of making money. By definition, it can't have any creative expression whatsoever or it wouldn't be the sole purpose of making Okay, money. well, yeah, if we go by that definition, I just don't think that definition is apt. That's what most people say. Like, that's what most people talk about when they say somebody is selling out. I would say... Like, the reason why we have to have that definition is because every album, all music, all art even, to some extent, is made for the purpose of making money. Because you got to make a career out of it somehow if you're going to do it for a living. you got to make money off of it, but... So like, can something be made for the purpose of selling a product? And still be good? Yes. It's just about, is it made for the sole purpose of making money? It, if it is made for that sole purpose, well, then, like it, I said, well, going by back definition. To my commercial, what else would a commercial be other than to well, sell the product? Who made that music? Like, you have to understand the people behind the art of advertising and the people behind the, the music of advertising – those it people a, aren't it, it normally like actual, involved. It, it wasn't uh, at a, a music piece. It was um, it was like an actual commercial played during the Super Bowl. Oh. Well, I don't know. Either way, like 
the the artist for the Coca-Cola logo or something like that. Yeah. These are people who are genuinely passionate about making art and they make art for companies because that's the only way they can make a living out of it. Yeah. But they don't make it for the sole purpose of making money. They make it because it's creative expression for them. And that's why those uh, pictures and paintings and things are so good. But when you get somebody who makes it purely for money, it's usually not that memorable and not that good. And that's also the case in music. I can't think of a single okay. example of I, an I album that was made point. solely for money that is actually good. I, I can agree to that point. So I think we can end, like I said, our AU um, meter average is 3.7 out of 10. Do not listen to this album. <laughs> it's bad. It's like, bad. I, I, like, we can both agree this album is a piece of shit, I think. Uh, I can't. I have a friend, or I guess I should say my fiance has a friend and I'm acquainted with her that absolutely loves this band and she's been posting on facebook about liking it and i'm just like like i how i need to how you know what? i need to i i like i don't want to message her for that reason but like i need to understand what are people seeing in this like yeah you not just have to be a diehard terrible fan. for sure but it's not... you love everything this band touches that's the only way that this could that be a good is, album yeah, i think that is the only way if you're just that i mean i guess if you're that much of a fanboy of this group then, yeah, I, I mean, I guess I can recommend it to you, but I don't even need to because you've already listened to it. To be fair, that's how I feel about bands like Haken. If they put out an album of them shitting in a toilet, I'd probably still find some way to call it good. So I guess I can understand they're, that to some extent. They, <laughs> no, you know, that's a literal, like, definition of, like, shitting your pants and claiming it's an environmental message. Yes. <laughs> I don't remember where I heard that. Oh, I think, I don't remember where I heard that, but, like... I'd say it was like it was an artistic message about the state of music today or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm self-aware. <laughs> yeah. All right. So did you guys listen to I already forget the name of it. It was just that memorable. If so, tell us your thoughts in the comment You're section welcome. below. You're welcome. Honestly, the I was name making is a joke. <laughs> I was making a no, joke about it not being memorable. The album is the most memorable part because, like, it's like the worst. It's like so passive aggressive and it's smininess. Like, here's an album. You're welcome, bitch. Yeah, you're welcome, motherfuckers. Yeah. Enjoy it. It's not good, but it's all you're gonna fucking get. <laughs> Enjoy my dumplings. All right. But yeah, if you enjoyed this album for some unknown reason. Please tell us why. <laughs> Please tell us why. I'm... Um, you know, and either way, like uh, you know, if you like this video, give us a subscribe, give us a like, you know, whatever. But uh, yeah. that being said, I'm Logan. He's irrelevant. And we bid you audio, audio do. do. Bye-bye. <laughs>